Hey guys, Scandinavian Defense is a very interesting and dynamic opening. It's a great option for blitz and bullets, but also some masters use it in tournaments with really high performances. In this video, we're gonna learn how to play against the three main systems white can try. I show you the main ideas and the impressive masters games. After watching this video, you'll be able to play and win with the Scandinavian Defense. We have Scandinavian Defense on the board after e4 d5. The idea of this move is that we are challenging white's central pawn, but also we are developing the light square's bishop. We are going to see an opening trap white can try against Scandinavian, but also we are going to focus on the three main systems they can try. For example, in this position, if white wants to fight to get some small advantage, they need to play e takes d5. And the idea is that after queen takes d5, now they can develop and get a tempo by attacking our queen. In this position, black has three main alternatives. Queen d8 is one of them, and this move is a little passive. Observe, we are just going to the initial position with all our pieces, and the only thing we got with d5 was to open the center. White will have like two extra tempi in development, but something interesting is that black won't have uh, weaknesses, so they have a healthy pawn structure and they can try to develop more or less quickly in the middle game. So it's a still playable, this queen d8. Also, a very common move these days is queen d6. It's an interesting alternative and it's been played very often in the elite recently. Uh, my favorite option actually is queen a5. It's like the most classical variation in Scandinavian. After queen a5, the most normal move for white is going to be d4. And here we are going to develop our king side like knight f6. In this position, a normal move for white is knight f3. And then we're going to play this move, c6. This move is actually important because we need to uh, make sure we have a, a square to go back with the queen. We have a retreat with our queen. So usually our queen is coming back to c7. In some positions, it's coming back to d8, but more often to c7. In general, when the bishop is not on a 4 and there is some kind of threat and we need to move, we go back uh, to c7. Observe the pawn is dominating the knight on c3. So this is a really important move here. White can continue bishop c4, uh, that's the main line. If they try something different like bishop d3, well we have many moves here, probably bishop g4 is the best way to continue just pinning. So after the most normal bishop c4, we're going to develop bishop f5 and then this is a key position in the theory of Scandinavian defense. This is the moment where white can play three different alternatives and they are First of all, they can try to take advantage of this moment where they have some small lead in development, they are controlling the center, and they can try to start some action. For example, like knight e5, that's the first idea. The other idea is when they try to castle kingside and just play a slower game, but trying to keep some small advantage. And finally, the other option is when they play bishop d2, they try to play queen e2 and they castle queen side. This time it's going to be a little more complicated. Usually we will castle king side and there will be opposite side castlings and the positions can get a little sharper. So let's see how to play against the opening trap. In this position white can play knight f3 and they are not protecting the pawn on e4, they're just giving that pawn away. And I think they call this gambit Tennyson gambit. In this position the best move for black is going to be d takes e4 and we are accepting the gambit. After knight g5, we need to play knight f6, it's a development move, and then we are protecting the extra pawn on e4. Here, white has some ways to play. Usually, if they attack the pawn, they can get it back. So, a good idea is, for example, after knight c3 and moves like queen e2 at some point, uh, just to give the pawn back and continue developing very quickly. So, white will lose some tempi getting the pawn back and we can use those extra moves to develop very quickly our pieces and usually we are going to get good positions using this strategy however there is this tricky line we need to understand very well and it is when white plays d3 here the best move in this position is going to be bishop g4 we continue our development we get a tempo by attacking the queen and once the queen moves well we can capture the pawn on d3 now and then continue with a very normal development, like knight c6, and our queen is very well protected, we have an extra pawn, there is no compensation for white here, actually white doesn't have a 
a good position right now. So it's a mid game with an extra pawn for black. Nothing is wrong here. However, after d3, it could be a mistake or maybe a little dubious to capture here on d3 because after bishop takes d3, um, there is this blunder and it is the move a6. That is that we are forcing, seemingly forcing the knight to go back. However, we are falling for the trap here. White can play the move knight takes f7. And there is a fork, so we need to capture the knight. And then there is this move bishop g6. And there is a discovered, so we are losing the queen. After the king takes bishop, queen takes queen. This position is decisive advantage for white. So after this three, you know, we don't need to capture immediately. We just play bishop g4 first. It's an or developed piece. And then we can trade once the queen is in a really bad position. And once our queen is very well protected by the rook after the development of the knight. So coming back to the main line, e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3, queen a5, d4, knight f6, knight f3, and c6. After bishop c4, bishop a5, and here we are going to see how to play if white tries to get the advantage early in the opening with knight e5. There is a threat here on f7, so we need to play e6. However, there is this situation when we have the light squares bishop outside the chain of pawns and there is a knight on e5. Um, there is this idea of playing g4 and what happens is that after bishop g6, which is almost forced, they can try a4. Observe that usually we play a6 here to clear that square for the bishop, but as the knight is taking the bishop, this time it's not going to be a good idea. I mean, they can play this. At least they can take the pawn on e6, but also most like queen d3 are very strong, attacking the other weakness on g6. So that's the idea with this plan, with knight e5 and g4 attacking our bishop. In this position, we are still fine, but we need to play the right move, and it is knight b d7. We are attacking the knight on e5, so white cannot try h5. For example, if they play this, we are taking e5, and if they capture, we are taking the pawn with check, and then we can save the bishop, probably over e4. So we are fine in this position. So after knight bd7, they need to trade here on d7. We are going to recapture, and now they can try h5. However, we have this square available here. So this position is fine when we play bishop e4. We are attacking the rook. Our bishop can still go back to d5. We are developing very easily the dark squares bishop somewhere over here. And we are castling probably queenside anytime soon. So the idea is that white is probably slightly better in these positions. But it's a very interesting and dynamic middle game. Analyzing Masters games about the opponents you play is essential to understand the middle game ideas. That's why I will show you this game by two masters. They got into this line we are studying. So, knight e5, e6, g4, bishop g6, and then h4. Here we said knight bd7, and after knight d7, knight d7, instead of h5, white tried here queen e2, and the idea is that now they are controlling e4, so h5 could be a serious threat. However, we can develop and get a tempo. We can play here bishop b4, attacking c3. White played rook a3, defending very well over the third rank. And then, now there is no knight here on e5, so we can get rid of this threat by playing h5. White found this move, bishop takes e6. And the idea is that after f takes, queen takes e6, they could be getting the bishop unprotected on g6. However, black doesn't need to capture the bishop, they can just castle, and now they can try to use the open file to get some activity. There is a bishop threatened over there, but also the king and the queen are very exposed on that file. g takes h5 was played, bishop takes h5, bishop takes d7, and then rook takes d7. After queen c4, bishop g4 is attacking the rook, but also clearing this file to attack the pawn on h4. After rook h1, bishop f3 is attacking the rook again. In the game, rook g1, but I want to show you a really surprising line. If white plays here rook h2, black is winning. 
I will say it very soon, but if you want to find it, it's going to be a really nice tactics training. So black to move, black is winning. I will say it right now. After this rook h2, black can win with the surprising move, queen e5. And there is a, this is a fork, so we're getting the rook. But, well, uh, the queen is hanging, right? So they can try to take it, but this is not really going to work. There is a pin. So this knight is not really covering d1, so we can just play rook d1 here, and this is checkmate. So that's the idea with this bishop f3. That's why black has been attacking that rook so much in the last moves, and that's why white needs to go away from the h file. So now this pawn is hanging over there. So rook takes h4, now we're attacking d4, so white needs to play bishop e3, and in this position, this move b5. And this is very interesting because we are like misplacing the queen, observe we have a lot of pressure on c3, so the queen needs to stay around. The pawn on c6 is protected by our bishop, so everything is fine here. After queen d3, we can continue with the initiative, bishop e4, and after queen d2, c5, white just resigned. The problem is that there is too much pressure here on d4. For example, if uh, white tries something normal like castling queenside, putting the king safe, there is this move bishop f3, and the pressure is just too much on d4. Also, we are attacking the rook on d1, so this is going to be winning for black is decisive advantage. The other system is when white just castles kingside and they play something slower, but they try to keep some small advantage with a better control in the center. Here we can continue e6, let's say bishop d2. There are some ideas with a discovered... Um, usually there is no tactic or there is no target when they move the knight to discover but if we can avoid the, that move is going to be better so queen c7 is just perfect here also the queen is very well on the on this diagonal knight e5 is a normal move here improving the knight and here we can develop bishop d6 this position is totally normal after rook e1 for example defending the knight we can continue just castling and in general White could be very slightly better in these positions, but uh, we are in a really solid structure here. We don't have weaknesses. In the next turns, we could be playing moves like knight d7, rook a, d8. There is this idea of breaking over c5. As white has a better control in the center, we need to fight against that pawn, and a way to do that is by breaking over c5. If we can trade these pawns, then the advantage of white in the center will disappear. So this that's a typical and a strong plan for black in this position. Of course, when we are going to play this idea of c5, we need to be careful with the move knight b5. So very often we will need to play a6 first before we actually break over c5. There is this game where the strong, talented, and young master Esipenko got into this line as black. In that game, his opponent castled in this position. He played e6 and then knight e5. Knight bd7 is normal, bishop f4, and he played here knight takes e5. After bishop takes e5, he defended the knight with the move bishop e7. White played in that game knight e2, moving the knight to the king side, he castled. After knight g3, he just moves the bishop back to keep it on the board. It's on a really good diagonal. After h4, this time we can play h6, and after h5, there is bishop h7. c3 was played, so the pawn is not a target anymore, but also creating a chain of pawns and protecting very well the central pawn on d4. But then queen b6, attacking b2, bishop b3, and rook a d8. This is a normal move we have already mentioned, and we're gonna play almost always in this structure. Observe, this is a half open file, so the rook is perfect on d8. Queen f3, a5, queen f4, and rook d7. There is a threat here on c7, so we should play something like rook d7. After c4, there is this move c5 reacting in the center, as we have mentioned before. And this move is especially interesting in this position because it involves an exchange sacrifice. In this position, white can play bishop a4, and now we don't have a, a good square for the rook. Remember, if we go back, they are playing bishop c7. 
So SC Pankum gets into rook takes d4, bishop takes d4, and c takes d4. Here he has a bishop and a pawn for a rook, but also when we analyze the position we see that he has the two bishops in an open position. The, the extra pawn on d4 is actually a, a passed pawn on the fifth rank, so it's really powerful, it's close to promotion, so it can create some problems. And also it can be protected by the other free pawn on the file. So it looks like there is enough compensation for black in this position. Rook fd1, bishop c5, rook d2, and then rook d8. Rook a d1, and at this point, d3, clearing this line, the pawn is not now on the fifth, is on the sixth rank, which is much more powerful and annoying for white. Queen f3, e5, wanted to play some e4, so rook takes d3, just giving the material back, but this is not going to be enough. In this position, Esipenko played rook takes d3, rook takes d3, and then he doesn't have to capture the rook or the exchange, he can just play here e4, and this is very strong because he's gonna get a whole rook up with this move. After knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, and here white resigned. The The idea is that after something like queen e2, he can just play bishop takes e3, queen takes e3, and we see that black has a whole piece up since they are playing bishop takes f2 in this position. Finally, there is this line, which is probably the main line against Scandinavian defense a queen a5 variation and it is when they try to develop bishop and queen on the castle queen side so bishop d2 we are gonna play here just a normal development move like e6 queen e2 we should play bishop b4 and once they castle queen side we need to play knight b d7 just developing but not making the decision yet about on which side we are planning to castle. So, after knight bd7, white can play some moves, probably the most normal and logical move is just a3, forcing black to give the bishop for the knight. So we can play bishop takes e3, bishop takes e3, and queen c7. In this position, we can see that white has the two bishops. However, when we analyze, we see that the pawn on d4 cannot move, and it's going to be blocking the bishop on c3 for a long time. So the position is not totally open, so we can say the two bishops are not too powerful by now. However, this is something to keep in mind about the plan we are going to follow during the middle game. We don't want to open the position, and if we can get rid of one of the bishops, it's probably going to be a good idea. In these positions, we can use a square c4 and d5 for our minor pieces. There are plans with knight d4 or knight d5. There is also an idea when white tries to get our bishop, we can play bishop b4 and at some point the bishop can come back to d5. The bishop on d5 is going to be really active, controlling both wings of the board. In some positions we can also advance over the queen side with a bone storm with b5 and a5, assuming we castled king side and we are playing opposite castlings. But also castling queen side is going to be a good option in many positions. There is this example where they got into this line, white played bishop d2, e6, queen e2, bishop b4, and after castling queen side, knight b, d7, this time white tried knight h4, also a theoretical line. Here they are trading our bishop for his knight, so we need to do something about that. The best move for black here is bishop g4, there's a skewer over here, so white needs to play f3. At this point we are going to play this move, bishop takes c3. This is a little surprising maybe, but there is a, a hidden idea here. And it is that if white recaptures with the bishop, we are going to have some interesting move. We have this check on g5 with the queen, getting the knight. So we can play here queen g5, and after king b1, queen takes knight. Even if they get the bishop, we get the pawn on g4, and we have a pawn up, and the position is slightly better for black. So after bishop c3, they need to capture here. That's why we are playing that move right now. They need to capture with the b pawn. And now we can just move the bishop back to h5. After g4, black played bishop g6. Now they can get our bishop, but this is fine because we're also opening uh, the h5 for the rook. f4, knight b6 was played. Now we're getting the bishop, so bishop b3, 
queen a3 check after king b1, knight a4. We are threatening checkmate and white cannot play bishop c1 because we are getting c3. So bishop takes a4 is forced and then we can play queen takes a4. In this game, white tried a5, trying to take advantage of the king still in the center. However, after g takes a5, g takes a5, there is this move. It's a rook lift. Observe the king is very open in this position, but we have only one queen attacking, so it's really hard to take advantage of this problem attacking only with one piece. However, if we can get more pieces involved, then probably the attack can be really dangerous. That's why black is playing here rook h5, and we are lifting the rook over the fourth rank. After rook d f1, trying to keep the pawn protected, now we can castle queenside. Again, there is some pressure here on f5, rook h, g1, and then rook d5. The same idea, a lot of pressure, but actually the rook is going to the queen side, and the attack could be decisive over there. Another move really strong here was g6, because there is some kind of pain here. The pawn cannot move because the rook is crossing the board, so probably that was even better. Well, rook d5 was played. And bishop g5 is surprisingly the decisive mistake in this game. The right move here was c4, covering very well this infiltration square. And after black takes the pawn on d4, white can take the pawn on g7. This position is more or less equal. It looks really complicated still, but it's more or less equal. So, in the game bishop g5, that seems to be really normal, but actually it's a blunder. In this position, there is a really strong move, and it is this rook a3. The idea is that now there is a lot of pressure over this rank, and moves like rook g3 or rook f3 are not really going to defend the position. Also, after a move like c4, we can still put a lot of pressure over the a file, and the attack is too strong. Well, uh, in the game, white played rook g3, but after rook f3, Black is winning with a nice tactics, I will say it right now, but if you want, you can try to find it. The right move for black to get material advantages, queen b5. And the idea is that we are trading queens, the queen is the defender here, so we are trading queens and we are giving check. So in the end, the rook is going to be hanging on a 3 it's a nice tactics just to get a rook up. So, after rook a3, we know rook f3 is not working, we know c4 is not working because of rook a5, and after rook g3, the move white played, there is another tactic sequence, there is a trade here, rook g3, h takes g3, and just to finish the game, a beautiful move, probably getting material advantage if white plays the right way. So, the best move for black in this position is going to be this really nice tactic move, knight e4, and the idea is that the queen is covering b5, so if the queen goes to e4, taking the knight, at least we are getting the rook, and also with check. So that's why this move is very strong. Now the knight is involved in the attack, we are attacking the bishop, we are attacking c3, the rook is still going over there, the knight is covering d2, so the king cannot escape over that square, so this move is just winning the game. Probably the best option, as we were saying, is queen takes e4, but then queen b5, and queen takes f1 with check, this position. You know, the exchange up is decisive advantage for black. Also, we are getting some pawns over there. So that's the reason why white resigned after this knight e4. Okay, so let's try Scandinavian defense. This is a good opponent. Well, this time he's not taking the pawn. He's just advancing. Usually this line is not so strong here. Uh, if I remember well, bishop f5 is a good move. And, well, e6. Well, let's continue our development. But clearly this is not the best way to, to play against the Scandinavian. Because in the other lines, white can get some lead in development. My bishop is outside the chain of pawns here. That's interesting. However, I must be careful with some uh, trick over here, like some h4 or something, trying to trap the bishop. Uh, Okay, knight d7 looks fine here. 
Okay, he's blocking the position. Uh, I think I'm going to castle. I'm planning some f6, some b6 for the next move. So I can get rid of his advanced central pawns. A capture with g is probably playable if he takes. So he doesn't have uh, that square for the knight. However, taking with the knight and uh, keeping a half open file here is also very tempting. I'm going to try this one. Okay, bishop b2, um, ld4 looks normal. You can play c4 at some point, but it's not a big deal. My queen is probably coming back to c7 soon because I, I have some initiative on the king side. My pieces are very active over there. So, yeah, I want to come back. Okay, so I'm going to put some pieces over there. One of the principles for the attack to the castle king is to put pieces on on that side. So I'm just moving pieces over there, controlling the squares. Okay, a4, let's see. Well, there are some tricky ideas with the bishop there. There might be some exchange sacrifice on f3 at some point. So yeah, maybe this is an interesting move. I mean. He can defend. He clearly can defend. But still, I, I think it's interesting. I'm improving my rook when I move that bishop to g4. So I think that was an interesting move. Also, rook e8 rook e looks very normal. I should be a little better here. Okay, rook e1. Let's see. Well, there's this nice idea with knight takes pawn queen, F, queen h2. I don't see I'm winning with this, but it looks very tempting. Yeah, I might try this. I might try this. Uh, I don't see anything clear, but I see some compensation. But also, I see a trick. If he plays rook h1, I could be playing rook takes e2. And I see some threats over there. So let's see what we can get here. So, okay, so bishop f1. How do we increase the pressure here? Well, rook e4 looks normal here, so he cannot take because I'm I'm taking with the pawn and, and I'm planning that h4 for example for the next moves. So let's see. Also if he blocks his rook, for example bishop e3, I could be taking the knight. Okay, rook e3. Rook e3. Okay, well, um, yeah, we said that h4 was an idea, right? So I'm going to play this one. I think the pressure is very big here. Okay, rook takes. Okay, pawn takes. I'm getting f3, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what uh, he might have seen here, but this is normal here. Yeah, also I'm attacking the queen, I'm getting the rook with a discovered. Okay, so we said the rook takes, and then rook takes bishop is coming. Okay, rook takes bishop. Okay. Well, here uh, it's just a matter of playing a little fast. And now this is made, right? If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want to learn a really strong line as white, check out this interesting video about Queen's Gambit. I'm sure you would enjoy it and it will help you a lot. Thank you so much, guys. Like, subscribe. See you on the next.